Welcome to the final techniques video in this series. Now, hopefully we've covered a range of techniques. Hopefully you feel you've got to grips with the techniques and you can see yourself using them in your work. We've got two more techniques we're covering uh, in this final video in the series. Now, these techniques are useful where you've got quite a detailed query you're try trying to address. So you'll have lots of criteria you're looking at to date. We've been looking at formulae like count if, sum if, average if, they'll allow you to specify one criteria. Count if, sum ifs would allow you to specify multiple criteria, but they can be quite intricate to put together. So if we wanted to specify three, four or more criteria, it would become quite complicated and time consuming to put together a sum ifs or an average ifs formula. Now this is where D sum and D average can really help us. These formulae have a different setup. So the setup is very different to the previous formulae and they are a little bit time consuming to set up, but once you set them up, they are so powerful. You can answer those multiple criteria questions really quickly. So let's get into uh, the spreadsheet. So we're dealing with the last two questions in the series now, question nine, question 10. So let's quickly examine these questions. What is the total number of children of people in the East who smoke aged over 30? So this is question nine. We're looking at the total number of children. So we're gonna be performing the operation on that column in the database. Then we've got one, two, three criteria we're looking at. So people in the East, so the region criteria, who smoke, that's gonna be the smoking column, aged over 30. So that's gonna be the age column, three criteria there. So yeah, we could put that together using some ifs, but it would be quite intricate putting three pairs of uh, components into that formula. So let's get started with D sum. As usual, I'm going to copy paste the question onto the analysis sheet. So we're on question nine now. And then we're gonna get ready for D sum. So D sum requires a certain amount of preparatory work. We can't just go straight into the formula. We have to go through a couple of steps first in order to get D sum working. The first step you have to remember is we're gonna copy paste the headers from the database. Copy paste the headers from the database. So I'm heading over to the data sheet going to select all the headers, control shift shortcuts, selected all the headers, just bring them into your screenshot there, control C to copy, keyboard shortcut to go back to the analysis sheet, control alt and V for paste special, control alt and V on a PC, hitting V for values. And there we go, we've got our headers there. So you can see I've done the whole operation just using keyboard shortcuts. Really recommend trying to get into keyboard shortcuts. That'll save you lots of time when using Excel. So we've got our headers in there. Let's stay with the keyboard shortcuts for a second. Alt H O H, row height, then Alt H W, wrap text. And now we can see almost all of the text, although we have got a problem in this cell. So I'm gonna go, um, one unit bigger. For row height, I work in units of 15. Units of 15 seem to work well. So I'm gonna go up to 60 and now I can see, yeah, all of the text in the headers. So this is the first step for building a DSUM formula. Take the headers from the database, copy paste them to wherever you're doing your analysis. Now these headers have to match up exactly. So if you have a small spelling mistake or if you have a space after one of the headers, the analysis is not gonna work so make sure the headers are copied, pasted with maximum precision. So this is our first step. So now we're in a position to start our DSUM formula, just to make this clearer and to show where our, um, where our DSUM table is. I'm gonna put borders in here, Alt H B A. Alt H B A will put all borders in there. So this just makes things a little bit clearer. Now we're ready to start the D sum formula. So as equal, as usual, equals D sum, equals the formula, open the brackets, then we get our prompts and the prompts help guide us. Excel tells us what we need to do next. So firstly, the database. So I'm gonna go back to the data sheet, uh, select the database, another point here that people often get wrong, that I get wrong. 
sometimes, definitely, is select the whole database. Select the whole database, including the column headers. And then just for completeness, it's good practice to put the absolute references in there. F4 key, got the dollar signs in that. So there's our database. Hit the comma key now. And Excel is asking for the next part of the formula. Excel is asking for field. Field. Now, what does this mean? This isn't necessarily, isn't really clear in my view, what, what exactly what this is asking for. But it's asking for the field or the column in the database you want to do the operation on. So let's go back to our question. What is the total number of children? What is the total number of children of people in the database? So we want to do an operation. We want to add up, sum, the number of children in the database. So this is the field or the column that we want to do the operation on. So in the field component of the formula, we're gonna type in the column header. And again, maximum level of precision, it's gotta be absolutely accurate or the, um, or the analysis won't work. So I'm gonna type in no, no, which is short for number of. So number of children. As you can see, I've uh, typed in the name of this column, just checking for spelling mistakes, etc. That's often something that goes wrong with the DSUM formula. Um, the field component is not spelt correctly, so just checking that this seems to be good. So comma again. Now the DSUM formula is asking for criteria. So again, not crystal clear what the formula is asking for here, but it's asking us to highlight this table we've created. This table is going to allow us to specify criteria. So it's so fast compared to using a sum ifs or an average ifs formula, we can just put criteria into this table. You'll see in a second when I do the demonstration, super powerful, super fast. But we've got to tell the formula, where is this table? I would call it a criteria table in the formula, the prompt is criteria. So we select the whole table, and we've got to remember to select the headers and the row underneath. So two rows in our selection there. Again, this has to be 100% accurate. Hit the F4 key, not necessarily, not necessary, just for completeness. So we've got the absolute references in there. And this formula is now complete, although it's normal with DSUM to not get it right first time. But as I've said in previous videos, rather than agonizing about each detail in the formula, though you've got to be precise, rather than agonizing at this stage, just try it, trial and error. Excel will give you clues as to what is wrong. So let's give this formula a go. Okay, so we've got 262 here. So already the formula is returning something, doing a little bit of analysis for you. So what is this 262 figure? Well, we might remember, we might be able to find in our analysis actually, the total number of children in the table, if I remember correctly, is 262. There we go, Alt plus hit. So this is adding up the number of ch children in each region. So if we add up all of those figures, we have the total number of children in the table. That's what I've just done. So there's 262 children in the table if we add up all of the numbers in this column. 262 in total. Now that makes sense to me because we currently we've specified no criteria, no criteria in our table. So we're not, we're not doing any filtering of the data in effect. We're saying to Excel, count every single row, count every row in the database. We haven't said to Excel, exclude or include any rows yet. So that's a nice validation check with nothing in this table, you would expect everything to be included, everything to be added up if we're talking about DSUM. So how do we put some criteria in? That's the next step. And this is where we, re we can really unleash the power of the DSUM formula. Let's go back to the question. Total number of children of people in the East. In the East, there's our first criteria. In the East is a region criteria. So let's just type in East here. And we've now got 93. So what's happened there? Well, the DSUM formula, we've put a criteria in there. Now it's only including the people in the East. So the rows that contain East 
in the region cell, it's only including those rows. So once again, let's do a validation check. Let's go back up. And how many children in the east? Okay, we did that for question four, total number of children in each region. We've got 93 children in the east. So again, nice validation check. Try to do the same thing two different ways. That's going to build confidence in the technique. So I'm happy with that. So what's our next criteria? What's our next criteria? Remember, we're talking about three criteria here. People in the east who smoke. Criteria number two, people in the east who smoke. So I'm going to go to the smoking column. And then if they do smoke, we're going to have a yes in here. And what we can see now is this figure has gone down again now to nine. That's because we've put another filter on the data effectively, specified another criteria. Now Excel is only counting people in the east who are smokers. So that group of rows that it's counting is gradually getting smaller. Let's try to uh, validate this uh, kind of manually. So let's go to the data. We're going to do a sort. Uh, so select all of the data. Alt A S S will allow us to sort. We've got some previous sorts in here. Column G is the region. So I definitely want to sort by region. But remember, we're talking about region and then smoking. Smoking column is column L. So let's just put column L in here. Two level search values A to Z. OK, I'm going to delete this old formula here. So we're talking about people in the east who smoke. So I've got the east um, data at the top here. Alphabetically, it's come to the top. People in the east who smoke. OK, so what data am I interested in? I'm interested in this subset of the data that conforms to both criteria. People in the east who smoke. So I'm interested in these uh, rows here. So what I would ex what I would expect, what we want the DSUM formula is to do is to just add up these rows. So four plus three plus two is nine. That's the result we'd expect from the formula. Let's go and check it out. And the formula is returning a value of nine. So this seems to be accurate. Again, you can see I've done the same thing two ways good way to validate, check your analysis. Finally, criteria three. So you can guess yourself, what might we do now to get that third criteria in there? Aged over 30. So this is a little bit more tricky because we're saying age over something. So it's a more specific criteria. To do this, we're going to need speech marks and then more than sign and 30. There we go. And this is going to put another filter on the data. So we've now got our th our uh, three criteria in there. Do we need the speech marks? Let's let's just see if we get a different result. OK, so we don't need don't need the speech marks there. So let's have a look at this. People over 30 go back to the database. It's already sorted. Uh, so how many people have we got over 30? So this person is over 30. Four kids. This person does have kids, but is not over 30, so would not be included in the analysis. This person, Mark, has two kids and is over 30, so would be included in the analysis. So we're looking at four plus two. So we would expect the analysis to return six. Expect the formula to return six. And that's exactly what we've got here. So again, another validation check managed to prove uh, that, it's, that it's accurate there. But hopefully that's given you a sense for how powerful the DSUM formula can be. For example, if we wanted to look um, people over 45 in the north region, just look at two criteria. That's how fast it is. So compare that, just typing values into a table, compare that to having to kind of manually tweak an average if or sum if formula it's clear that this is much faster, super powerful. The trade-off is it takes some time to set up creating the criteria table, making sure everything is accurate. You know, you're unlikely to have success the first time 
you try to set up a DSM formula, even the first few times. Personally, it took me several attempts to, to really build confidence um, using DSUM. But once you do get it set up, get the criteria set up, get everything working, use these validation techniques to um, build your confidence in the formula, so powerful, super powerful. And personally on projects, I find customers love this. They can very quickly um, filter the data much easier than manually going into database and putting uh, filters on. So that's the D sub formula. What's the final formula we're going to look at in this series? Similar to D sub is the D average formula. Back to the key questions. I'm going to copy paste our final question in here. Okay, copy paste in. There we go, the question appeared there. So I just wrapped the text, Alt H W, or unwrapped it in this case to make the text appear there. So what is the average number of children for people in the South who have children, but do not exercise or drive? So again, quite a specific, sophisticated query there. So we've got three criteria, people who have children, but do not exercise or drive. So let's get into the D average formula. The good news is, the setup is very similar to the DSUM formula, so it's a good principle generally to recycle things you know are working well. So I'm going to just copy down, um, copy down this setup here and adjust the row height 60 Alt H O H to adjust the row heights. Let's scroll down a little to bring this into your screenshots. So the average number of children for people in the South, right. So let's get started with the average. We've got a table there. Um, so you need the same, the same setup as for D sum. Let's get started with the formula, D average. I'm gonna hit the tab key here, hit the tab key here. Let's put the formula in for me. So database field criteria, we're familiar with this. Let's go back to the database sheet, highlight the database. Control up cursor to go to the top. Control shift left. Sorry, control shift right. So taking me all the way to the right. Control shift down. Assuming you've got continuous data, assuming you don't have any empty cells. Selected the whole database, comma. Now it's asking for the fields. So let's go back to the question. Uh, the average number of children. So again, the field or column that we're interested in is number of children. So we just type the column header in there and then criteria. So you might remember from the previous formula, from the DSUM formula, criteria means the criteria table and for completeness, we're gonna make that an absolute reference. So the same components required as for DSUM, so good practice for you getting familiar with these components and getting it all working. So I'm gonna hit enter now and the formula is active and working there. But firstly, let's just um, delete all the criteria. So what's this giving me? This is giving me the average figure for all the rows in the database, 2.54. We've got no criteria in here at the moment. So it's counting, it's including all of the rows. So let's just validate this and let's put an average formula in here. There we go, let's select the whole database, control shift down. So we've got 2.54. So by manually, if you like, calculating this, putting an average formula in, selecting the range, we've got 2.54 and that's the same, we've got the same output here. So again, validating the formula, the same thing, two different ways. So I'm satisfied with that. So beginning to build our confidence uh, in this technique. So now it's time to put some criteria in the table as we did with the DSUM formula. Average number of children for people in the South. Criteria number one, in the South. Let's pop that in. Who have children but do not exercise or drive. Do not exercise. So how often do you exercise? What's the term in the database here? All the time, frequently, never. So this is what we're interested in. How often do you exercise? Never. And then do not exercise or drive. So they don't drive either. So that means I think in the do you drive column, yeah, we're interested in people who have entered no into the do you drive column. 
So this, we've got our three criteria in now. So this, this should answer this question, complete the analysis. So let's go back and check this. So we're gonna to have to sort by region, exercise, and then drive. So read, so G, gonna write this down, G, then column M and column N, okay. So again, select the data using keyboard shortcuts, Alt, A, S, S. Edit this search a bit, so column G, okay. Column M, and then column N. There we go, so three level search. This should give us what we need. Okay, I think I've accidentally included the headers there. So that search wasn't quite right, we'll do that again. So my data does have headers. So we've got region and then column M next is exercise. Yep, and then column N finally, which is, do you drive? There we go, three level search data does. Now it does not have headers, my data. Okay, there we go. I think this is gonna work. Let's give this a go. Okay, there we are. So the question, the question we're looking to answer is people in the South who have children, but do not exercise or drive. So we've got to find the South here. Just navigating down the database using keyboard shortcuts. And then do not exercise. So we're interested in people here. Okay, there we go. So the subset of people, we're, the subset of data we're interested in is right here. People in the South who never exercise and then people who don't drive as well. So a subset of that subset. And we're only interested in these three uh, rows of data. So here we've got two plus one is three. Remember, we're only counting the people who have children. So the result should be two plus one is three divided by two. So the result should be 1.5. Back to our analysis, and that is the result that the D-average formula uh, has given us. So again, super powerful technique. You can very easily move criteria out of here, move criteria in here. You know, uh, people who have two children or more, for example, um, yeah, any combination of criteria you want, you can get working using DSUM, super powerful, and presents the advantage of being faster than doing those average if sum s formulae, uh, although it does take a bit of time to set up, but that will get easier with practice. So as always, I recommend downloading the practice files, physically practicing these techniques yourself. It's gonna help build, build your confidence, gonna help build, build your skill. Okay, so that's the end of the techniques video for this series. I hope you found these techniques helpful. Most of all, I hope it might change your attitude to databases, how you manage databases. As I said in the intro video, on projects, I always see people kind of dividing databases up. For example, in this case, people might divide the databases up into different regions in order to get the analysis you need. Now that act of dividing a database up just dramatically increases the level of complexity of the file, makes things much more difficult to work with. So rather than dividing databases up, I suggest you spend your time learning some of these database formulae. That means you're gonna have a single coherent database. You're gonna be using the power of Excel database formulae to get exactly um, the analysis uh, that you need. So I hope this series uh, was helpful for you and I hope to see you in another video on the channel.